All right, what's up, guys? Mason the Brock Anderson. Uh, this is the Chelsea versus Aston Villa. Um, I don't have a whole lot to say about this game, mainly because there's no reason why we should not have won this game. Um, <clears throat> if anything, there's most of the good to draw from this game, like most of the good performances and stuff like that, you can't really take at face value because, well, it's Aston Villa. Like, even if it is at Villa Park, it's still Aston Villa. They're not... Everybody's beating them. Nobody's having difficulty beating them right now because they are just completely falling off. Um, <clears throat> so I, I don't really take into account any of the good performances today. Uh, I will mention some of them, though. But the bad stuff is what really stood out today. And I think number one is, once again, the lineup from Hiddink. The first 20 minutes... We were not creating anything. We weren't necessarily getting attacked upon, but we weren't creating anything because he's playing Remy again. Why? I don't understand that. What did he do last game that convinced you, hey, he should get the start again today? Nothing. Like, the last game he did absolutely nothing. And it's frustrating to see him there again. And if he hadn't gotten injured in the 20th minute, I guarantee we would have gone into halftime 0-0. Still tied. Because... Pato came in, he, he was not necessarily great today, like, it's his debut, so um, I didn't really expect to see him do a ton of stuff, but he came in and changed the game, he added a new, he added a striker that moved, you know, he put pressure, he was moving up top, uh, he was making good runs, whereas Remy just kind of stands, because that's all Remy does now, he's not a striker. He has so much pace, but he doesn't move at all. He's so lazy, and I hate seeing that. Um, the other thing that was not helping us is Mikel starting again. Uh, ultimately, overall, he ended up having an average game instead of his normal bad game, just because you know Aston Villa makes him look good. I mean that the the little everybody's calling. Oh, look at those quick feet from Mikel. That was him trying to get a touch. And he just kept like passing it back and forth between himself because he couldn't get a good touch. And because Aston Villa is so bad, they couldn't get a touch on the ball. Like they kept flying in and diving into the challenge and missing. So it looks like Mikel like, but in reality he was trying to get a good touch of the ball. Ends up just like cutting it back and forth, trying to keep from losing the ball. And because Aston Villa sucks, he it, it looks like he did that all on purpose. Um, <laughs> I know the truth because I know Mikel and I've actually, you know, I coach high school soccer. Um, I help out with the junior varsity as well. So I see players like that who it looks like, oh, look at them. They just beat that player because of that little quick touch. The truth is they don't know what they're really doing. It just quick. They got that quick touch because they were trying to do something else, but it happened to work out for them and it looked good when they did it. Uh, not that I'm saying Mikel is a junior varsity player. The, ju the, the junior varsity is much better than he is. Um, it's a joke, people. Take a joke. Anyway, so, yeah, the first 20 min minutes were just frustrating to watch. It was slow. We weren't creating chances. Aston Villa was actually getting some pressure put on us. And I'm just like, this shouldn't be happening. Nobody's had this type of difficulty with Aston Villa at all. Pato comes on, all of a sudden we start getting more attack, uh, he's making good runs. I think because we were more in the attack, that means that some of the players that were hanging back so much now can get up in the attack more. I mean, Kennedy was non-existent while Remy was on, but then showed up after Pato came on. Loftus-Cheek was pretty sloppy at first, but then Pato came on. and you know, It's just having a good striker up top helps the rest of your team. You know, Fabregas... If he doesn't have a striker that moves for him, his game is completely wasted because that's what he he finds the striker moving over top. That's his game. That's what he does so well. That's why he assisted so much last season because Costa was moving so much and created those runs. That's what they've been doing recently uh, to get the goals while Costa has been on the field. So that was the biggest thing in the first half. Uh, and, you know, on top of that, we've got... We got a good first goal, uh, Loftus Cheeks first goal in the Premier League, which was you know fun to see. But you know it was well worked after you know Mikel works it out wide as Filiqueta, I think took it in or something like that, and then crosses it in. There's Loftus Cheek puts himself in a good position. 
benefits from a bit of a deflection, but you know, still in the right place at the right time, which is nice. Um, so if I get distracted, I've got Liverpool Tottenham on TV. So um, <clears throat> and then Pato, you know, like I said, he's doing the work that a striker should. Put himself in a good position, brings the foul from Sissoko, and uh, you know gets dragged down in the box and then converts the penalty, which was very good to see him get his first goal for the club. Uh, even if it is just you know, oh, it was just a penalty. He he's the one that drew the penalty, so that's good to see that he's uh, working hard. Um, second half rolls around. We've got Oscar coming on in the second half for Kennedy. Maybe Kennedy had an injury. I'm not sure. Um, I was a bit disappointed not to get to see a bit more of him, but you know, Oscar came on and did did well. But like I said, you know, before good performance in this game that doesn't necessarily mean that he's back to what we need him to be um, from last season. And then the last sub was uh, I think Pedro came off, and then uh, Clark Salter came on. This one. I kind of understand because you want to get this young defender on, you want to give him the chance to play, uh, and on top of that, it's a bit more defensive, so you can keep the clean sheet. I get that, but at the same time, we're attacking so much that Aston Villa really isn't getting, it isn't really getting that many chances, and the few that they are getting, you know, the defense is smothering pretty well. So why not Traore? He he didn't start last game. He he came on for Remy later on. He didn't start this game. He didn't come on at all. What has Traore done that Hitting doesn't like? Because from what I saw, he was playing well. He was doing well. He was scoring goals. He was putting himself in the right positions. He was working hard. Even when he's on the wing, he's doing the same thing. Just not scoring as many goals. So my question is, what happened? Why isn't he playing? Like, why isn't he starting over Remy, who's done nothing to earn that place on the field? I don't get that. It's like Hitting just sees these players that are completely useless as the golden boys, the ones that we need on the field. You know, Mikel does nothing all game, but we need him out there. Remy is absolutely useless as a striker. We need him out there. I don't get the mindset. I don't understand that type of thinking. <laughs> what is he seeing that nobody else in the world is seeing, aside from a few people that are idiots, but you know, what is he seeing that I don't see? Because every time I watch Mikel play, I get frustrated. In the first half, like I said, overall, he looked better than bad today. You know, like, normally I'm frustrated watching him the entire game because I'm watching him jog back, I'm watching him walk back. Today, since we didn't defend as much, I wasn't as frustrated with him because he didn't have time, he didn't have a chance to jog back when we are being attacked because they didn't really attack us that much. But he, in the first half, for the first part, he was giving the ball away way too easily. And I'm sitting here watching this like, you know, if Maddox is out there, we are dominating possession right now. We we don't have to worry about giving away possession. Um, his passing has been a bit sloppy, Maddox, recently, but he's not giving the ball away every single pass that he makes. You know, he doesn't try to dribble in the middle field and then give it away. If he's dribbling, he's dribbling forward with pace, and he's going to lose it. It's going to be up top. It's not going to be in the middle of the field because Mikel's doing a little turn, turn, turn. It's frustrating to see because everything that I'm watching Mikel do, I'm like, Maddich could do it better. So why isn't he playing? Is Maddich, like, misbehaving in practice? Is that is there something going on with attitudes that I'm not seeing? Because I don't get it. I don't understand why Maddich is always on the bench and Mikel is always playing because performance-wise, on the in games, Maddox has been performing well when he's come on, and Mikel is doing nothing. I don't get it. So that's that's my weekly spiel for, uh, against Mikel. I, I generally um, I talk about Mikel most of the time in my reviews. I, I've tried to kind of shy away from that because I know I've talked about it before, but because last week was the international break, it's been a while since I've you know, gotten to spill all my guts about it. So that was my um, little gripe for this week as far as Mikel goes. Uh, let's see. Talk about the goals really fast. Like I said, for the first one, uh, well worked. Uh, Loftus-Cheek put himself in the right position. The penalty, Pato did well. 
to draw the penalty and then convert it. Uh, the third one was... Crap, I can't remember who scored the third one. I remember the fourth one was Pedro, but... Was the third one Oscar? I can't remember now. <laughs> Dang. I'm, I've really lost my mind. Alright, but the fourth one I do kind of remember. Like, it was another good... Oh, wait a minute. Ah, whatever. <laughs> the... I think the third one was the one where Oscar connected with Pato and then he crossed it to... Maybe it was Pedro. Anyway. I'm kind of... I'm, I'm losing track of, like, what happened. It, honestly, for the second half, I kind of stopped... I, I didn't stop paying attention completely, but I lost focus a bit because it was a bit slower. Aston Villa came out and really didn't do much. So Chelsea came out and kind of played a little bit complacent, um, which was a bit disappointing to see because I wanted to see some of these uh, some of these players, you know, like Pato and um, you know the the people getting subbed on. I wanted to see them really get a chance to show what they could do. But majority of the second half was a bit slower, uh, aside from like the first the, the third goal in the second half, which was just you know quickly uh, right after the the kickoff. So yeah, you know it was it was a decent second half because obviously we still we kept the clean sheet. We didn't let them get that many chances, but it wasn't exactly the most interesting second half. Uh, so gonna go to player ratings. I would say that Courtois had an average game. Couple moments where he looked a bit shaky, uh, as far as. There, there was one he should have come out and just punched away. Instead, he's like reaching with one hand and kind of tipped it to one uh, to an Aston Villa player who luckily missed. Uh, defense, Espelicueta had an average game. Uh, Miazga, I thought, looked good, but like I said, Aston Villa. <laughs> um, that doesn't necessarily mean much because their attack is not great. Uh, so his def I, I will say the one thing that he did look good on today that I can probably judge him on fairly well is he he did hold the ball up and pass it well. Because um, <clears throat> that, that is one thing that I noticed that he was doing really well today is that whenever he picked up the ball, he did a very good job of finding passes. Uh, and so he, that that's one thing that maybe we'll look at a bit more later. But, you know, for a debut... Not bad. Uh, Ivanovic, a couple moments where I got a bit worried because it seemed like he was losing focus. He was losing track of players. Uh, Baba, eh, as always with, with him. I just, I don't know. He's not exactly the the best player. Um, he's an, He's got some pace, and he can pass the ball fairly well. But as far as defending, as a defender, I wouldn't trust him with, you know, if there's somebody that I need need covered, I would not trust him with it. Um, let's see. Into the midfield, Fabregas, average game. I thought there were a couple moments where he was passing the ball pretty well. Um, and, you know, once Pato came on the field, he really got a chance to uh, play his game well and get the ball over top. Uh, Mikel, like I said, but. Better than usual, but still not good enough for me. Kennedy, eh, not not as good as what I've been seeing. Uh, I thought that he was fairly silent compared to most of his most of the time he's creating a bunch of chances. He's really making himself dangerous. Today he was kind of inactive. Uh, he did have a couple moments, but overall not not as pleased as I normally am. Uh, Loftus Cheek played fairly well. The only complaint I have about him, and I've noticed this as he's been playing more, defensively he doesn't do the work. Where if you put Oscar in that position, he's going to track back and put some pressure so the player charging down the midfield at our defensive mids doesn't have as much time. Loftus Cheek is just kind of going to stand there um, and not really put in a challenge. Uh, Pedro, I thought, played fairly well. Uh, 
I, I think I think he scored both of the second half goals. I honestly can't remember. I'm gonna have to look this up now. It's gonna bug me. I, I really should have like rem I really should remember this more, but it's it's been a long day so far. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, he did score both goals. I thought I thought so because I remembered him scoring the fourth one, and I thought he scored the third. Anyway, he played fairly well, though. Uh, the one thing that I really do enjoy about Pedro when he's on his game is how hard he works. Uh, defensively, off the ball, he just he runs. Uh, that It's kind of what William brings, except William has more pace, and Pedro is just more of a fighter. Uh, even though he's a bit smaller, he's still, he will not give up on it, so that's always good to see. Remy, like I said, worthless. Pato came on, looked good, uh, maybe a, a bit slow at times, but I think that's kind of going to happen as you're getting into the league, uh, because most players don't just come to the Premier League and then instantly make an impact. Uh, most of the time, they'll have a good game or two, but then as they start, you know, the, the physical nature of the Premier League will get to them, and they won't be as effective in the next game, and then it takes them a little bit to get adjusted. Um, who came on? Oscar, like I said, played played well, but it's up against Aston Villa, so still don't know if he is what we need right now because I've been fairly disappointed with him. And then finally was Clark Salter, and didn't really see enough of him to judge him, I guess. Uh, but he, you know, in needing as a team that needs a fullback desperately because we've only got. It's Billy Cueta, who, you know, he, he's always fairly good. Recently, his performances have dropped a little bit, but overall, he's been a good player for us. Ivanovic has been really shaky this season, and Bob is just not a good defender. We need fullbacks. So if he can play that fullback position, and if he does it well, you know, give him a chance. But didn't see enough of him today to really make that judgment. But overall, I was just mainly disappointed that Traore didn't get a chance to uh, to show what he could do, especially against an Aston Villa team that looks very weak. You know, it's a chance for him to get a few goals in and you know get get going again in the scoring because it's it, the past couple games he's played he hasn't scored. So <sighs> yeah, overall, <laughs> like I said, anything that I say about this game, some of it you can take to be like, okay, yeah, you know, we won four nothing, yay. It, it's three points that we need. But at the same time, if we don't win this game, if we tie or if we lose, it's really embarrassing. Because that, hey, that's that's kind of been the story so far since hitting's taken over. It's like games that we should be winning, we tie. But thankfully today, that didn't happen. We got the win. Uh, so yeah, overall, I guess I'm I'm not happy, but I am pleased <laughs> like it's, it's weird to say but I, I am pleased with the result I'm glad that we got the three points but overall I would say I'm not exactly happy with hitting because of Mikel and Remy and no Traore so we'll see what happens uh, I think there's nothing midweek because it's Champions League so wait till next weekend for the next game but we'll see where it goes from here um, the Okay, the one final thing I do want to talk about, because I just remembered this. The announcers were really, really pissing me off. Because it feels like that this is kind of the accepted mindset for Chelsea. It's like, well, their season's pretty much over. And as I've said many times, under hitting, we've tied eight games. And only like two or three of those were games that, you know, maybe we weren't... 100% sure we were going to win. You know, the rest of them, like, playing against teams that are lower than us, playing against teams that were in poor form at the time, playing at home in general, there are several points that we've dropped. And if we, like, like I've said before, that's, you know, eight games tied, that's 24, not 24, 16 points dropped. Um, and even if, like, if you take away the, uh, like take away the Watford result um, away, take away the Everton result away, and then maybe the Man U result away. 
Um, those are three ties that I'll say, okay, being, being generous will keep those in. That's still uh, 10 points dropped. Those 10 points, we'd have 54 points. We'd be tied with Man City in fourth place. And even now, we have 44 points. Stoke City drew today. Uh, West Ham drew today. Arsenal, Man City obviously won. But, I mean, the teams that are above us, West Ham's in fifth place. And they have 51 points. We're seven points behind him. There are seven games left. That's 21 points we can pick up and a lot of points that teams can drop. And as much as teams have been dropping points this season, our season's not over. So it's crazy that everybody's just kind of like, you know, oh yeah, you know, Kyle Martino is sitting there talking about, well, you know, Chelsea, the only thing they can really bring from this game is uh, seeing their youth players. I'm like, no, we need to win because we can still get into Europa. It's not Champions League, but some of these players that we need to keep are going to leave if we're not in Europe. They're going to be like, well, I want to play in Europe. So they'll leave. We can't let them leave. I don't care if fans are upset with them because they're not playing as well as they did last year. Some of them are young. Hazard is still, what is he, 24, 25? That's still fairly young for a football. That's, he's still got at least six years before he starts dropping off. Matic, 24, 25. Still got plenty of time. Courtois is young. Who else? People want to get rid of Costa. I'm like, he's scoring now. I don't understand you people. Like, the fans honestly piss me off the most because so many of them are just so... I don't want to say fake because they still love the club, but they're picking out these players for, you know, criticism that are just having a bad year, and they're like, so, that's not for the good of the club. I mean, look at, look at players like, you know, I'm watching Tottenham right now. Look at Harry Kane. His first year, dominated. The next year, not non-existent. You know, last year he he was there, but he wasn't nearly as dominant as he was the first year. He was having an off year. You know, people were finding out better ways to defend him. Look at how he's doing this year. If Tottenham last year said, you know what, this Harry, Harry Kane, he's not doing that well. You know, we need to we need to get rid of him. He he started off well, but now he's just dropped off. We need to get rid of him. Look at what he's doing for them. They're in second place now. If we do this to players like Hazard, like Matic, like Costa, like Fabregas, if we do this to these players that can get the job done, they're just having a bad year, what what does that say? You know, it's just like it's just like the the, uh, the manager situation. One of the problems everybody has with Abramovich is, oh, as soon as you start doing poor, you're gone. Now, with Mourinho... Different story. He was kind of an idiot, so he forced himself out of the job. But if you start doing that with players, nobody's going to come, going to want to come to your club because as soon as you start performing poorly, oh, we need to sell them now. That's stupid. People need to change their mindsets right now because we can't lose these players. We need to get into Europe to keep these players so that way we can bounce back. We can come back with a better season next year, get into the Champions League spots, challenge for the title again and bring world stars to our club again because right now it feels like everybody's just giving up on this year. Okay, you know, this year's done. We need to get past it. No, we need to finish in Europe. That needs to be our goal. So let me know if you agree or not down below. I find that more people, most of the people I talk to tend to disagree with me because they are diehard Chelsea fans and, you know, players like Mikel are Chelsea players and, Players like Hazard are traitors, and they need to leave, and blah, 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 and they're reading into everything, and they're reading all these media speculation things. I'm like, you need to get off the internet now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let me know what you think down below. Uh, what do you think our solution needs to be? Do you agree that we need to challenge for Europe, and do you agree that Mikel should be lower than a bench player? Uh, leave a like and subscribe for more Chelsea content, and I'll see you at the next game. Peace out.